snake, that area is inhabited by the Japanese flying squirrel. Japanese flying squirrels are non-venomous and they shouldn't attack you. The head, front legs, hind legs, and tail of the Japanese flying squirrel are connected by a membrane of skin, which allows the squirrel to glide from tree to tree. It says here that if it catches a good wind, it can fly more than a hundred yards. Sounds like it's going to be tough to catch one. So aren't you going to ask me? You know it. How does it taste? Not sure. Not sure? The guy doesn't say anything about it. Why not? Gee, maybe it's because no one would ever think of eating a flying squirrel. Then I must be the first one. Maybe you are. Snake. Snake, that area is inhabited by markors. The markor is a kind of wild goat that lives in mountainous areas. It's quite large, so I don't think you'll be able to capture one alive, even with the tranquilizer gun. All right. Speaking of which, do you know the origin of the name Markor? No. It means snake eater in Persian. Snake eater? Lost your appetite? Not at all. So, how does it taste? It's supposed to be pretty good. All right. You say there are attack dogs? Those attack dogs are Great Danes. The breed is originally from Germany. They've been used for hundreds of years as hunting dogs. As you can see, they're very large, strong too. They've got a calm yet courageous temperament, and on top of that, they're extremely intelligent. In some cases, a trained Great Dane can be more dangerous than a human opponent. Watch out for them. Interesting. Forget it, Snake. Forget what? You were thinking about how they taste, weren't you? I wasn't thinking. Don't lie to me. I could tell by the look on your face. You can't see my face. No, but I can imagine it. <laughs> Don't you dare think about trying to capture an attack dog. <laughs> you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Snake, be careful of those attack dogs. Don't worry. I know how dangerous they are. No, you're the one who's dangerous. Me? Those dogs are just innocent animals, even if they've been trained to kill. You shouldn't hurt them unless you have to. But... You know, humans and dogs have been living together for 50,000 years ever since the Stone Age. Sure, they make good pets and watchdogs, but they also help us out in a variety of different fields. Not just as police and army dogs, but as hunters, shepherds, rescuers, and seeing eye dogs. They deserve our respect. I know what you mean. I'm a dog sled fan myself. In the future, many of the jobs that dogs do now will probably be taken over by machines. They'll have miniature unmanned reconnaissance vehicle and security systems. And in the 21st century, I'll bet they'll even be selling robot dogs as pets. You've got to be kidding. But even if that happens, dogs will still be our most trusted companions. Unmanned recon vehicle. That's a pretty scary thought. Well, for now, trained dogs are the best they've got. I see you've got... I see you found some Russian glow caps. The Russian glow cap is a kind of luminescent fungus, a mushroom that glows in the dark. Why would a mushroom glow in the dark? It's bioluminescent, just like a firefly. It uses the so-called luciferin luciferase reaction. To put it simply, luciferin reacts with luciferase in the presence of magnesium 2 plus ions, breaking it down into oxyluciferin and carbon dioxide. The carbonyl groups in the oxyluciferin are initially in an electrical excited state. When they return to their base state, they give off light. Did you get all that? Not really. Oh. By the way, does that mushroom recharge your batteries when you eat it? Huh? I mean, it seems like if you ate a glowing mushroom, it might recharge your batteries or something. Snake, your batteries are organic batteries. They produce electricity by utilizing the potential difference between cells. Organic batteries are known for their highly efficient energy conversion, but they still rely on chemical reactions between proteins and enzymes to- So you're saying they'll get recharged? Believe what you want. Right.
paramedic. What's up? You were right. About what? I ate a Russian glow cap and it charged up my batteries. Huh? What's wrong? I, uh, that's, that's great. Um, Snake, can you excuse me for a second? Sure. There's no way eating a bioluminescent mushroom would cause your batteries to recharge. What do you think it means? Beats me. Maybe it's all in his mind. You mean like a placebo effect? <laughs> Why not? You've seen how gullible he is. I guess there's no harm done. Should we let him keep believing it? Sounds good to me. Okay, Snake. I'm back. Yes, the Russian glow cap is a glowing mushroom, so it'll recharge your batteries when you eat it. Paramedic, I caught a parrot. What kind of parrot? It's green all over with a large beak. Then it's probably an Alexandrian parakeet. It's sometimes also called the Alexandrian parrot. The Alexandrian parakeet originally comes from Indochina and is distinguished by its green body and red beak. It's very talkative and makes a good pet. But it's strange. The guide doesn't say anything about there being Alexandrian parakeets in that area. I'm thinking it must be someone's pet that got away. Hmm. Snake. What? Don't even think about it. Eating a cute little bird like that. But I didn't say. Just don't. <laughs> Snake, there should be fly agaric mushrooms growing in that area. The fly agaric is a relative of the death cap mushroom that grows only in that region. You'll find it growing on the ground, but it's poisonous, so if you pick one up, don't eat it. If you do eat one, go into the survival viewer immediately and use cure to take some antidote. The poisons found in the fly agaric include phallotoxins and amatoxins. It says here that when you eat it, the initial symptoms include nausea, stomach pain, and diarrhea. Finally, your liver and kidneys will break down into a sponge-like substance and you die. Sounds like a horrible way to die. Isn't it? Yeah. So how does it taste? Huh? How does it... Were you listening to me? The fly agaric is poisonous. I heard you, but if I did eat it, it might taste good, right? I give up. <laughs> Snake, that area is inhabited by the green tree python. The green tree python isn't venomous, so no need to worry. It's fairly docile, too, so I don't think it's likely to attack you. The green tree python originally comes from Australia and New Zealand. It's a really pretty green color, and it lives... Oh, my God. What's wrong? Snake, what did I just say? They come from Australia and New Zealand. No, after that. They're a really pretty green color. I thought so. What was I thinking? Seeing a snake and calling it pretty? What's wrong with that? Everything. When a normal woman sees a snake, she's supposed to scream or get sick or something like that. And do you think you're normal? What was that? N nothing. Ugh, oh, it's all your fault. Jeez, I'm sorry. But enough of that. What do you mean, enough of that? This is serious. No, I... I just wanted you to tell me how it tastes. How should I know? <sighs> it was awfully pretty, though. When you get... Snake, there are rats living in that area. The rats in that area are the descendants of wild Norway rats that were domesticated by humans as pets and lab animals. They're not poisonous, and I don't think they'll attack you, but they're quick little creatures, so you might have a hard time catching one. Uh-huh. So how do they taste? Snake? What? They're rats. I know what they are. Do they taste okay? <sighs> the guide says they're not that bad. Good enough for me. Ugh. I see you found some Ural luminescent mushrooms. The Ural luminescent mushroom is a mushroom found only in Selinoyarsk. It looks like a shiitake mushroom, and it's often found growing on the trunks of trees. If it looks like a shiitake mushroom, then it must be edible, right? Yep. 
I can't guarantee that it'll taste just like a shiitake mushroom, though. By the way, paramedic. What? I tried that Ural luminescent mushroom you were talking about. So how did it taste? It was poisonous. What? It was a poison mushroom. Really? Yeah. That's weird. The guide says it's... Are you sure that guide is reliable? Don't worry, it's fine. It just happened to be wrong this one time. No. I see you found a Spatza. Spa. Spatza. Spatza? Right. Interesting name. Hmm. Hmm. Uh. Huh. So, paramedic. What? What kind of mushroom is a Spatza? Uh. You really want to know? I guess so. Okay. Let's see. The Spatza. Yeah. It's gray. Hmm. And it grows on the ground. Yeah, and? That's all. That's all? That's all the guide says. Okay, so I don't know that much about it. Why don't you eat one and see? It might be pretty tasty. Eat one and see? What do I look like, a lab rat? Shh. What? What did I say? What if the rats hear you? You'll hurt their feelings. <sighs> Paramedic. Yeah? I ate one of those spots of mushrooms you were talking about. Really? How did it taste? I passed out. Seriously? Yeah. So that's why they call it the bringer of sleep. What? Oh, I looked the word spatza up afterwards and found out it means bringer of sleep in Russian. Well... But anyway, the reason the spatza puts you to sleep when you eat it is because it contains a type of anesthetic substance similar to an alkaloid. Maybe if you soak a handkerchief or something in it, you could use it to put the enemy to sleep. Eating a spatza and falling asleep might cause your life and stamina to recover as well. Why don't you find a safe spot and try it out? Snake, there's supposed to be a Tsuchinoko in that area. Tsuchinoko? You've never heard of it? It's a mysterious snake that's found all over Japan. If it lives all over Japan, then why is it so mysterious? Many people have seen them, but no one's ever caught one. If you do manage to catch one, it'll be a major historic discovery. I think you should look for it. If I have time. So what kind of snake is this, Tsuchinoko? The body is about as thick as a beer bottle, and the tail tapers off to a point. It doesn't slither around like other snakes, but rather goes in a straight line like an inchworm. Sometimes it even jumps several yards at a time. It's got sinister-looking eyes, and it can even blink and move its eyes around. It's also been known to snore, cry, and stand up straight on its tail. And this is an actual snake? Of course. Uh-huh. Then how come you seem to know so much about them? Is it in that guide of yours? No. Then maybe you saw it in a movie, like Curse of the 50-Foot Tsuchinoko or something. There's no such movie. I heard about it from Sigint. Sigint? He's an expert on UMAs. UMAs? Unidentified mysterious animals, dummy. Oh, excuse my ignorance. Why does he know so much about them? 
probably because he likes them. At the CIA, he was the vice president of an unofficial group called the UMA Watcher Club. The UMA Watcher Club? Yeah. Just the other day, he was working on the newsletter at his desk. At the office? How does he get away with that? Well, the major is the chairman of the club. Uh-huh.